But I know that even if this stuff is real, which most of it isn't, they're using it to take our liberties and freedoms and pointing it at us. Now, I'm going to shut up because we're very honored to have Max Kaiser of MaxKaiser.com, TV presenter on BBC, RT, uh, Press TV, uh, Genesis, Saturday mornings, uh, writes for a lot of big publications, uh, and we are honored to have Max Kaiser on with us. Max, good to have you. All right, Alex Jones, back with you. How are you? Oh, so soon, Max. Good to have you here. Fantasmagorical. I am ready to spill my guts. Well, I love your breakdown of the fraud trifecta and what's happening with the mortgages. I want to recap that. But can you, in layman's terms, because you're you know, an expert in vintage stock market technologies, a top broker, can you break down what it means to have the Federal Reserve announce that they're going to, quote, fix the debt uh, with quantitative easing, i.e. injecting trillions more into their own coffers, not into the economy. Uh, can you explain to people why that signal has driven the dollar down and gold towards the moon? Well, it's, it's quite, you know, simple. I mean, you just had Bill Spill on. And uh, for those who missed it, they should replay that. And for those who heard it once, they should replay it and hear it again. And he said something very important. He said, you need to keep the amount of money in the system fixed or maybe graduated uh, tied to population growth. You simply can't uh, just keep money printing ad infinitum because it totally causes economic chaos. Uh, unfortunately, uh, the Federal Reserve Bank is trying to deal with this foreclosure fraud, which has created uh, $60 trillion, by some estimates, dollars worth of bad paper that's imploding, uh, which, they, uh, which is deflation. So they're trying to shovel dollars at it to counteract this deflationary force. But so far, it's not doing anything. The only thing that it's succeeding in doing is that it's putting all this money ending up in the pockets of Chinese people and people in the Mideast and people in India who are buying stuff with it, like gold and commodities. I see cotton is at a 140-year high. I was on your show two months ago and three months ago and six months ago. I said, look at cotton. Cotton will be trading so high because the dollar is so weak, that the biggest job in America will once again be cotton picking. And we see gold, uh, not just gold going up, but crude oil as well, every commodity. Food, well, crude food, oil is food. In dollars, and as the dollars go down, all you know, OPEC says, okay, go ahead and debase the dollar. Uh, we're just going to jack the price up. And so that means that if it, the U.S. thinks that they're going to stimulate their export market by devaluing the dollar, by printing more of them, so there's more of them, so the value per unit goes down. Uh, but the OPEC just simply says, well, then we're just going to raise the price because we've got an OPEC cartel. So therefore, the cost of your input, the cost of your raw material, the cost of oil is going to be such that you will have no export-led recovery. There is nothing that the Fed can do on a monetary basis to stimulate the economy other than the, the one option, which, of course, nobody will consider because it would put the speculators out of business. The option, of course, is to raise interest rates, not to lower interest rates. If you raise interest rates, then people will want to own dollars. they want to put money in America. That means that America has capital. That means America can be in the game of capitalism. But because there is no incentive to own dollars, people are dumping the U.S. dollar, and so America is resorting to command and control style of economic policies. It's communism, essentially Soviet-style communism by the Federal Open Market Com Committees, the new Politburo, and they are uh, resulting in the exact same thing we saw in Soviet-era Russia uh, 30 years ago, 40 years ago. You've got uh, unemployment. You've got... Um, Incredible shoddy merchandise. It's basically a collapse, Soviet-style collapse, engineered by the same central planning committee. The tragedy in America is that the people who run the economy don't trust capitalism enough to give it a, give it a try. They, they, they don't trust capitalism. They're afraid that if they let capitalism work its magic and get rid of the losers and all the criminal banks, that their friends won't like them anymore and they won't be invited to the shishi parties anymore. And Max, that is the key. They are blaming capitalism and the free market for this when you've got six mega banks who can commit any crimes they want. They can steal trillions of dollars, steal veterans' death benefits. They can take houses they don't even have the deed to or that are paid for. 
and then they're yeah, up there. This, look at this fraud with the foreclosure market. It's actually it, the, the, the trifecta of fraud has now become the fraud quartet. All right, stay there. Tell us about the fraud. We got to break fra- the fraud. Fraud quartet. When we come back, but and then the big banker-owned media says capitalism didn't work. We've got a socialist system run by the bankers. You'll pay your taxes directly to us. Not just interest on fiat money we create. We've got it all figured out for you. Capitalism didn't work. No, this didn't work. No matter how little you may know about the dangers of a nuclear blast or radiation sickness, you can become an emergency preparedness expert after reading Red Horse, How to Survive a Nuclear Blast or Dirty Bomb by Sam Adams. A must for every American home, this book is a step-by-step how-to manual for survival in the event of disaster. Red Horse, How to Survive a Nuclear Blast or Dirty Bomb is available for immediate digital download for only $39 at DirtyBombSurvival.com. Order the hard copy for just $49 plus $8 shipping from DirtyBombSurvival.com. Plus, you can own the rights to copy and sell this book. Find out more at DirtyBombSurvival.com. That's DirtyBombSurvival.com or call 877-327-0365. That's 1-877-327-0365. Order your copy today. They helped to create a new world order. We are part of a new world order. A new world order based upon collective action. Invisible Empire is a damning indictment of the globalists through their own words and documents. The new world order really is a tool for addressing a new world of possibilities. It means all the world under their control. The United Nations would take over America. The Trilateral Commission would control the world. Invisible Empire chronicles how men of power and influence have worked in stealth for centuries to establish an oppressive world government. I believe, first of all, that we now need nothing short of a world constitution for the global financial system. Global governance with the establishment of a G20. So it's going to be an inner ruling elite and then everyone else. And I got news for you. You're everyone else. Invisible Empire. Secure your copy today at InfoWars.com or PrisonPlanet.com or watch it online in the highest quality at PrisonPlanet.tv. Hi, this is Dwayne Daly with Midas Resources Precious Metals Brokers, and my phone number is 800-686-2237, extension 115. If you are sick and tired of being sick and tired, then perhaps it's time for a change. You have the opportunity to make a change in November by voting, and the opportunity to make a change in your financial security today by calling me, Dwayne Daly. Get the stability and peace of mind that you deserve with gold and silver, a form of wealth protection for 5,000 years. As the inflation pinch becomes tighter and the dollar continues to devalue, while Stocks remain iffy at best. Stop the bleeding with precious metals. Metals will let you retain your purchasing power, protect your assets, and stop inflation the day you get in. I have many different ways to accomplish this, from metals for possession to IRA rollovers, tax-free, and everything in between. So if you would like to turn your scrambled nest egg into a souffle, call me, Dwayne Daly, at 800-686-2237, extension 115. 800-686-2237, extension 115. If you are ready for a change, please call Dwayne Daly. To ship a vehicle safely from point A to point B, which company should you choose? Easy. Stateway Auto Transport. Why trust Patriot-owned Stateway Auto Transport? Many reasons. Stateway is not just a broker, but a fully licensed and bonded carrier with its own fleet of trucks and $1 million of cargo coverage insurance. With Stateway, your vehicle rides safely on a direct route on the same truck, and your shipment is always door-to-door with no hidden fees. And every shipment includes free online vehicle tracking. Simply put, Stateway Auto Transport is the best, most efficient, quickest, and friendliest worldwide shipper in the business. To receive a free quote from a live customer service representative, call 877-848-7474 or see us online at statewayauto.com. That's statewayauto.com or call 877-848-7474. Ask about discounts for seniors, military, and all GCN listeners. Stateway Auto Transport, your one-stop shop for worldwide vehicle transport. Talk to them every day. 
We are back live, ladies and gentlemen. Freedom is on the march. Max Kaiser is our guest. Some of your phone calls coming up in the next segment. 1-800-259-9231. John Irish popping in for about five minutes at the very end of the hour with the latest developments on that front. Mainstream media is still running with the fact that he's a convicted uh, wife beater. Uh, not true. It's admitted I've got his criminal record and uh, it's just none of it's true, and that's why they had to release the baby, but they don't care. They're calling for him to go over the baby again. Uh, going back to Max Kaiser, so you were getting into the fact that this is not free market. This is crony, not even capitalism. It's like crony corrupt looting uh, going on. And you you said uh, Friday on the show at 6 a.m. during the special transmission uh, that it was a trifecta. Now you're changing that to a quartet or a four-legged uh, creature. Uh, tell us about this creature. Right, this uh, the foreclosure fraud, which ties into the subprime mess, which ties into the entire collapse. There, there's more than three criminal frauds being perpetrated here. There's, there's four. Uh, let's, so just a bit of a review. When the loans were made originally, they were made fraudulently. In, in 2004, we know the FBI launched a criminal investigation into these mortgage companies, uh, which were peddling at the time what they called liar loans. That's fraud, because there's no such thing as a liar loan. Uh, they have a fiduciary responsibility to make good on loans that fulfill certain requirements, and uh, one of them is that the person can, in fact, pay back the loan. So that was fraud number one. Fraud number two is that, of course, now that there's a collapse uh, and there's a problem with these liar loans and these fraud loans, there's a lot of foreclosures going on, and the banks who did the initial fraudulent inducement to get people off to buy into these loans are now fraudulently foreclosing on people. They don't have the paperwork. They don't have the documentation. They don't have the legal ability to legally foreclose on anybody with these uh, mortgages. Number three, they package those foreclosures, those fraudulent foreclosures, into mortgage-backed securities. They sold them to pension funds and other banks uh, with the S&P and Moody's and other rating agencies blessing, knowing that what they were selling was absolutely worthless and did not deserve an A rating. William K. Black just talked about this. These, they knowingly sold these to banks and pension funds knowing that they deserved a zero rating because they had no rateable assets whatsoever. So that's fraud number three. Now, here's the, here's the amazing part, fraud number four. After they sold these uh, securities, two pension accounts, banks like Goldman Sachs made massive bets against the securities themselves, knowing that they had sold fraudulent security. It's like they sold tainted meat, and then they made a bet that the person who bought the tainted meat would get sick and die. So that's total, that's insider trading and fraud again. So that's fraud. Now, if you want to add another... Yeah, let's go to the quintet. Let me throw a quintet in here. Uh, now we have Bloomberg reporting five, six months, no, now seven months ago, that the government is, quote, ordering private pension funds to invest in failed banks. So they've already been swindled once. Now they're ordered by the tyrants who have no law. They just order them uh, through fear to invest in failed pensions. So that's, uh, th uh, so that's number five. So let's go to number six. Okay, number six is that, again, banks like Goldman Sachs, J.P. Morgan, and the rest, they have what they call credit default swaps. These are insurance contracts, essentially, that are made in excess of the face value of the fraudulent bonds that they sold. So when the bonds collapsed and they were short those bonds and they made money on their shorts, they made another huge score on the insurance that they took out that they would, in fact, make negative bets on the very security that they sold fraudulently to begin with. So th this is why... At the end of this year, Goldman Sachs and the rest of Wall Street is going to pay themselves $144 billion in bonuses, another new all-time record. At the same year, unemployment's up, food stamps are up, uh, poverty is up, because what we've seen here is a transference of wealth from 99% of the population to 1% of the population. Okay, but let's go to number seven. Um, now two years into the October 2008 banker takeover known as the bailout, they still won't tell Congress where trillions went. And Paulson said on October 3rd, you must pass this to unfreeze mortgages. September 4th, he said, we're not going to use it for that now, and we're not going to tell you what we used it for. And we know they used it to pay bonuses out to themselves. So they're just getting us coming and going in every direction. Yeah, that, get to get to the original question, what is quantitative easing? What's it for? It's to cover the banker's butt. I mean, they are still have paper on their books that they 
are telling people it's worth $100,000. But $100. they're taking that money in quantitative easing and keeping it and then still pushing the failed stuff out to the pension funds. Exactly.